Do you want to do? Why don't you do one uh, for me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what do you want me to do? Just like um, five. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Stop! You're killing me. All right. Okay, ready? Yeah, go for it. Five. <laughs> Okay. Three. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> nice. Right, my turn now. Number five. Number three. It sounds like a movie, you know. Yeah, it In does. The world. Yeah, you hear yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> that guy, yeah. <laughs> I am rolling. Rolling. Nice. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep them. Doggies rolling, raw hide. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Right, on the count of three. One, One two, two, three. three. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And once again, I'm joined by the master, the legend. Mark from Long Island Watch. <laughs> how are you, sir? I'm doing well, and how are you doing? I'm okay. I'm a bit stressful this morning, but uh, I, I can tell. I was ag- I was about to um, uh, phone you and say we got to cancel it because they were drilling outside. Oh my god! Yeah, but no drilling. This it started snowing heavily, so they're gonna. Ah, uh, uh, oh, we're getting rain today. You're getting rain, right? Yeah. Thank goodness, I'm done with the snow. So this is episode eight. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. I need to number these because I, c- I keep losing count and then I have to double check. Uh, and then I don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, uh, wristwatch check today. Oh. Well, I can only show you one because one right. of the other ones is part of the. <laughs> oh, it's part of the video. Right. Okay. If that's acceptable. So, okay. I'll show it to you. It's an Islander. I'll show everybody else. Uh, it's an Islander, but I put it on these elastic straps that I guess I've seen you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I've, I've got these elastic straps. I'm actually going to start selling them soon. Um, nice. Very comfortable. Yeah, so, they're, yeah, they're comfy, right? So it's my Islander Field Watch on an elastic strap. Very, very nice. How about you? After the last episode, I decided to put the, the Laurier back in rotation. Very nice, very good. And my wrist has got bigger, I think, because I put on a little weight, and I think also all the boxing. Got it. So I need to find the links, and of course I can't. I don't know where the, the links are. So never know where they are. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't never know. know. I'm gonna have to um, call up Lo- uh, Lorenzo and Lauren and see if they got any spellings. Anyway, um, very nice. So th- so this is a new new Islander. Well, I don't know. I think it came out in January. Right. Yeah, maybe January. I guess I haven't seen you in about a month. So yeah, uh, Field Watch. I released four different colors. Nice. Um, and I just realized my AM and PM is switched. Haha, <laughs> it's flipping the date now. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I did four colors. So this is blue. And I once wanted, to, I was really doing it to see how comfortable these straps were. Uh-huh. And pretty impressive. Impressively comfortable. They're very, it's so easy to uh, take on and off and adjust. And Yeah. And and also, I think with a with a field watch like that, a really nice match. It kind of it works. It just yeah, works. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I agree. I agree. So today we are going to discuss um, top ten chronographs under five hundred dollars. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Following following the success of the last episode, which guys, if you it will be that sign. I'll leave a thing there. Uh, have a look back on divers. Uh, I think chronographs was up there along with actually field watches to talk oh. about Ooh. so we should do that at some point definitely guys give us a thumbs up oh and i should say check out mark's channel of course oh thank you yeah. Yeah. yes yes thank you uh, uh, an update on i me. can tell it's... you're already looking at the counter i yeah, can see yeah, your yeah. eyeballs going <laughs> yeah I, can, I i should look before before we film and see where we were last time but we're getting there we're gonna crack yeah. 40 44 soon yeah I so hope. subscribe to mark's instagram as well please yes we're doing this in descending order of, of bestness. Are we? Yeah. <laughs> it's up to you. You tell me. Definitely. I think so. Okay. So we want to do it from, from worst to best. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. I could do that. Yeah, let's do that. You see, I have extras on here too. Mm -hmm. Just in oh, case. Oh, nice. Just in case, because, you know, in full disclosure, I told you my five, but you didn't tell me your five. <laughs> so just... <laughs> I'm keeping it a secret. I'm keeping it a secret. <laughs> so just in case, I picked out some extras and also some honorable mentions. Nice. Just Very in nice. case. Just in case. Just in um, case. You know, it's funny. I was actually going to wear the Flightmaster because I think that's a great chrono under 500. Yes. But I, I didn't go with it. I didn't wear it. I feel like disgust, disgust, disgust over and over again. Not disgust with like the bad disgust, disgust with an ED at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I omitted it from my selection too. Yeah, I kind of avoided it on purpose. Five. So I'm going with another Seiko. I'm going with um, a Solar World Time Chrono. It is the SSG 017. Jeez, look at this thing. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, it almost has a speedy vibe, yeah. if, if you will. Um, it runs on their uh, 8B92 movement, mm -hmm. which again, so it is a solar, so it never needs a battery change, um, but it's also radio sync. So it hooks into the atomic clock so that you can get oh, wow. the, you know, always has accurate time. Uh, <clears throat> the thing that I kind of don't like about a a bunch of chronos and, and this one this one also suffers from it it's only got a 60 minute elapsed timer right which right. I, I don't know why so many companies do that it seems to me they could have done made better use of the sub dial at three and maybe some kind of an hour counter but it does so much it does the world time as you can see from the outside it's got all the different cities and stuff oh uh, right yeah, yeah. It's nice so 100 meters of water resistance, hard lex crystal, so eh, take what you can get. Uh, but at about 450 bucks street price, um, I thought this was a great and uh, a great way to start the conversation. Yeah. Um, to see what you can get. Um, lacks an alarm. That's where the flight master would have won, right? But yeah. lacks an alarm. But it's again, it's got the chrono. It looks good. It's got the world timer. This is a pilot's watch, right? Because I'm looking at the hands. Yeah, I would call it. I would call it one. It's got that high visibility edge, and it wouldn't be the only pilot's watch that I have in my listing today. Right. Um, but uh, I, I dig it. I think it looks yeah. pretty cool. It, it is cool. It's funny because it's got these kind of 1920s style numerals. The, the numbers, absolutely, yes. But then it's very modern. It's, it is. It's it interesting. Is. Yes, yeah. and then you've got. Um, I know people always ask that the nine. What are the or those all those letters? I right, think it's I was like about eight, to ask you that. Yeah. I think it's um. So HL is high low, depending on how much charge it's got, and uh -huh. YN is a, a yes no, whether it got the sync signal overnight or whether it didn't. Right. Um. So oh, it's um, a little weird looking, but it, it it's functional. It still works though. It does. It absolutely yeah. works. Do the numerals loom up? I believe they do, yes. Oh, I believe good. they do. I good. believe they do. Because if they I, didn't, I think that would have been a missed opportunity for... Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. I, I love the hands, those syringe hands. It's yeah. It's gorgeous. And it, that works with the numerals. Yeah, it's very easy to read. Um, it, it just does a lot, and it does it really well. Nice choice. Thank you. Is this your only sake? Well, I know what you're... Is this your only sake? Um, well, yeah, I think it is, actually. Yeah. I only look even through my backups. Yes, this is my only Seiko. Nice. Oh, I had another. Oh, I had discussed with you another one. Um, a Solar Chrono SSC six six seven blue dial Solar Chrono. Right, right, but right. But yeah. I also wanted since we're going under five hundred, and I, we should say it's under five hundred street price um, because the list price on this is like six hundred, right. but you can grab them for between four and five. Um, I want it also cover all different price points. So this kind of got me closer to the 500 mark, whereas the other Seiko was going to bring see. me back down to where some of the other ones reside. Cool choice. I, I, I did not know about this watch at all. Um, so that's a cool choice. Yeah. And that, that is why I am here for you. Yeah, exactly. Five. I'm going to go with a Yema. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the Rally Graph. Now, it hasn't actually... I, sh I should, you know... Be very clear about this it hasn't come out at the time of recording this okay but i was sent one to review and oh nice so i got to handle it i got to to see what it's like i turned the review down because i just i couldn't i i, I think i've reviewed too many yemmas now got it um i love their superman which is their you know what they're famous for and mm -hmm. 
they've recently been reissued and great French brand. But I'm going to go for the Rally Graph that they've brought out a, a more affordable um, quartz version. Okay. Arguably the second most iconic watch after the Superman because it was famously worn by uh, Mario Andretti, you know, the, okay. the racing car driver. Yep. Uh, and for those of you not uh, do not know, he's, I think, one of only three racing car drivers in the world to win Formula One, IndyCar. Uh, what was the other one? I didn't note it down. Uh, world Sports Stop. World Sports Stop. Well, world sports start. World sports car championship. Good job. <laughs> nice. Thank, thank you. Um, IndyCar and spring car, which is these really kind of unusual looking things. But anyway, you know, he's a legend, right? right and he true. wore the original. I think it came out in, I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, the, so it was the 50th anniversary in 2019. So what would that be? It would be 69. Yeah, right. It would. Yeah, 69. Yeah. So the original. Your, ma- your came, math is correct. Right. Okay. Cool. Uh, so the original came out in 69. I think it was a Valju based something or rather. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it's got this really kind of distinctive look with the red stripe on one side. Okay. I don't actually like that one, but they're doing a version that's kind of a panda and a and an evil panda as well, which I really do like, you know, just monochromatic. But what's interesting about this, it's, it's, a, it's a mecha court, Seiko, obviously, but mm-hmm. Seiko actually owned Yema for a period of time. You did not know this. Yeah, it's kind of, so it, it's just, I don't know, it's kind of cool thing that it leads right. back to that, you know. What goes around comes around. Yeah. Yeah, um, but now again, they're independent, French-owned. They're doing great stuff. They've got their in-house mechanical calibers, which reminds me, if you want the mechanical one, it's going to be 1600, I think, something like that. But I just think if you're into motor racing, right? you know, it's, it's, it's a, I think they're about 350 bucks, something like that, it's you know? It's right in there. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that will be out in March. Um, so, and I have... I have seen it, so I can recommend it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, very, very cool. Good one. Um, what have I got written here? Uh-oh. Oh, I've got written here. I didn't know uh, Mario Andretti lives in Pennsylvania. Well, that's an odd fact. That's an interesting fact. I didn't know that. I was watching a really cool interview with, um, what you, I think it's Watchunista. Is it Watchunista? Okay. Yeah. There's a- um, one of the last few uh, kind of, you know, hasn't become a selling platform. Uh, journalists you know of 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 watches and um he he's a big watch guy has like a hundred like over a hundred watches mario andretti yeah i just thought i didn't know that that's so cool you know you got money and nothing else to do (laughs) yeah fair enough (laughs) 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 well this is the hobby for you really yes it is four on to my number four number four well see now i can show you what i'm wearing so oops. oh we haven't done we haven't done uh yeah well um, only, we're only we're only one in <laughs> well, yeah but we haven't done hoodie check any anything on the hoodie today? oh you know i'm very sorry i'm not I, not that i picked up a corporate sponsor of adidas <laughs> um it's freaking cold yeah <laughs> i'm yeah. so cold <laughs> right and my, all my hoodies i think all, all my good hoodies i think i've used already so i don't want to right. repeat so okay i'm just going comfort today you're wearing the same color i am Oh, co- yeah, a little maroonish, right? Yeah, we're coordinating. That's we good. are, we are. Yeah, I am. So I'm comfort today. My fingers are freezing. I, oh, no. <laughs> it's, so, it's amazing. I, I live in this weather. I just hate it, though. <laughs> mm. Six months out of the year is really nice. The other six months are really cold. <laughs> anyway, uh, my, my number four mm. would be the Hemel. Um, yes. I'm wearing the Air League Chrono. Right. And I'll show you, too. I believe... You have one. Yeah, I just received it yesterday. So perfect timing. This comes from Marvin at Hemel, and um, this one or the HF15 airfoil that I happen to sell. Um, they're all in the same price. They're all right around four ninety nine. Um, man, I've been wearing this thing for uh, about two weeks now. Mm. It's awesome. It's so yeah. comfortable. Uh, the action on it is amazing. The bezel is phenomenal. But the design cues are just the numerals, the hands again with the similar style hands to what we just saw a minute ago. Yeah. Uh, the really cool sub dial at the three, 
Sounds like you're playing with your bezel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I can't resist. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing, it just is perfection. So let's see. Let's go through some specs. I mentioned the price. So uh, he, uh, he oh, sent me this one to, yeah, to, to have a look at. That's it. I have the same. I'm wearing the, the same, same one. one. I'm wearing the same one. Yeah, this is Ta-da! very impressive. It really is. Look at the construction. Yeah. It's a beautiful uh, bezel. Oh, should man. we should we address the the elephant in the room? We're going with, to. Okay. I Sorry. think oh, I think I'm going to talk elephant. Okay. Uh, but I'll let you know. Cool. Uh, let's skip over the movement for a brief yeah. moment. Uh, it is a 42 millimeter in diameter case, 15 thick, 49 tip to tip. So normally, you know, I, I, it works fine on me. Like I said, it mm. really looks good. Very comfy. Um, 30 minute chrono, again, that's the ST19 movement. Um, you can't get much about that. The HF15 watch, he kind of got around that by putting on a dual time bezel. So you can use that to track your hours. Nice. You, know, you set the hour hand. Nice. Um, 100 meters of water resistance, really nice. Is the elephant in the room the ST19 movement? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's funny you should say that um, because, so I did a Q&A video, um, I don't know, maybe a month ago or so. I had people writing on Instagram, tell me your questions and I'll answer them. So I answered like 40 questions in a video. Mm. And one of the questions someone asked me was, would you use a, a watch in the future with a seagull movement? Mm. And I guess you kind of got to watch what you say sometimes because I said, no, I know too much, so I would not use them. And so many people just just hopped on that comment like, oh, what mm. does Mark know? And I think it's just totally misconstrued. So the ST19 movement is... The preeminent affordable chronograph yeah. movement. Yeah. The only one before it would be the Polyot 3133 from Mac Time, which has been out of production for, I don't know, probably about 30 years or so, or 20 years. Um, the problem with the Seagull movement is that there's so many degrees of quality that you can get out of the Seagull factory. And I am not close enough to that pr- process to make sure I get grade A movements. So I choose not to just go down that path. I'd rather right. just, I stick with my Seiko movements or whatever because I know they're all good. They don't have different degrees of quality for an NH36. Mm. They're all the same. Um, so that's kind of like what I meant with it. Um, I sell plenty of Seagull chronos. I mean, they are my best-selling mechanical chronographs. Yeah. Um, so I can see the defect rate. I know the failure rate, and I'm confident in the movement, you know, absolutely. Um, what people have to realize also is it's... Uh, you know, it's a movement with hundreds and hundreds of moving parts, mm. and it's very difficult to do. So, uh, do I know too much? Yeah, I just know industry stuff, so I stay away from it. But yeah. if you know what you're doing, it's wonderful, and you can guarantee to get yourself the good movements, then you're fine. You know, I wouldn't be selling, like I said, so I deal with um, uh, the 1963 reissue watch, a, a lot of them, because the people I get them from, I can trust, and I know that they're good watches. So if you know what you're mm. doing, it's fine. But me personally, mm. I would not produce a watch with it. And that's what I meant when I said that. Right, I understand that. And I, I think people need to realize also that to, to get a, a column wheel chronograph like this, of this complexity, it, it's asking a lot because normally, what are we talking about? Thousands and thousands of dollars. Easily. So of, co- of course, I'm not saying that corners have been cut, but you're not gonna get the same meticulous you know, no. QC, you're not mm-hmm. going to... It's not real blued screws. They're painted yeah. screws. Right. Um, they're not, you know, there might be some nice finishing on it, but mm. it's not prolage. It's not coats. You know, it's not Geneva coats. Right, right, right. It's generic. It's as generic as it can get. So who made the original caliber? It was... uh, uh, Venus. Well, Venus, the, what, right. the, the ST19 is based off of a Venus 175 movement. There's a whole bunch of... You can read about it online. Um, yeah. It's like they sold off all the materials to the machines that made them. Go is ahead. it true that, sorry to interrupt, is yeah, it true ahead. that they, I don't know if this is like, you know, mythical legend, right? Is it, did they ship the machinery to China? That's right. I absolutely heard. Yes. They had stopped making the movements and they bought them all over and... They started making them. Now, are those same machines in use today? Probably not, because by now you can re-engineer anything. Um, yeah. So probably by now they're all just Chinese copies. Uh, but no, that is where the brains of the movement come from. Mm. Absolutely, yes. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, design. And I, I have to say that I, I, I know Marvin, and uh, his 
design work. I mean, it's just impeccable. Yeah. He he really knows what he's doing. He comes from that background. Yes. Um, he's a wonderful person just to hang around with. I mean, I I, I miss uh, not seeing him at the Mars in Astoria and having a drink and catching up. Incredibly cultured individual and, and an absolute gentleman as well. And his designs are so clean and carefully considered. Yes. I just I, I I'm a big fan of his work. The only criticism is that I'm I'm shocked that there's no. Um, because he always does his signature orange because he's ha of Dutch Dutch uh, ancestry. Right. There's no there's no orange. Where's the orange? Where's the or orange, Marvin? He needs an orange <laughs> hand. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. No, but uh, it's it's a couple of order. He really outdid himself, and and um, oh god, you know, I'm glad he sent it to me uh, to take a look because I can see for myself. I mean, all of his watches. I, yes. I've, I've always, you know, I've reviewed two two of his watches mm -hmm. in the past. Um, massively underrated. Yes. Micro brand. Well built. Know? Yeah. So you carry Hemel now. As I well. do. Yeah, right. I've carried it for. I met him in the diner a few years ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, shout out to Marvin. Shout out to Marvin. Um, well done, man. Well done. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's difficult not to get mesmerized by the movement, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's extremely. It's very It's very photogenic. Number four. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to get the Dan Henry out of the way because I know we men I mentioned him last uh, last month. The thing is, when it comes to affordable chronographs, he it's predominantly the majority of his of his watches. Right. Um, and that, this I had a dilemma because personally, I don't have it at, with me right now. No, no, right here. Personally, my favorite is the 1962. He he take, picks a year and and takes inspiration from famous watches of that year, like okay. we, like we said last time. Yep. You, you know you know about him, massive collector. He has time time dot watch uh, timeline dot timeline oh, no, timeline. That's it. Thank you, um, and credible knowledge. And he and he kind of mixes it together with these kind of hybrid. They're not direct homages of one particular reference. Right. So. Um, now, I would have loved to pick that, but this list is not about me. It's about what the best is out there for the audience. Mm -hmm. um, I think his best chronograph in terms of value, in terms of tech, uh, technology, in terms of quality is the 1972. Now, it's got this kind of Top Gun, Orfina, yeah. Porsche design look, and it comes in either uh, a silver tone with a, with a kind of matte finish or a pvd which is really really cool there, there's slight kind of hints of the hoya pasadena i think it's pasadena i think yeah, it was it looks um, like a yeah it does it's got a lot of uh it's got a lot of cues very nice yeah and also a little bit of le jour 7000 in there as well um but what makes this amazing is aside from the price it's a limited edition so he does it from the year so there are 100 no sorry 1972 um, of each but inside we have this um, rather unusual movement you don't see this a lot Myota OS 80 quartz hmm. uh, which has a 12 hour chronograph and you were Very saying nice. earlier yeah yeah exactly yeah. so that's really really nice date you've also got an alarm with a little indicator at the uh, where is it I think it's about the 730 position mm-hmm um, so you can switch the alarm on and off. 41 millimeters, impeccably well made. I had to turn this one down when, when reviewing it because I, I've reviewed too many of his watches now. Right, right. You know? And then I end up buying them and, ha and owning them. And it's right. like, I do not need another. I have, <laughs> I, Absolutely. You know, I have seen it in the flesh. Um, they are beautiful. And I think in terms of quality, they are very uh, like solid. Sapphire glass, if I neglected to mention. In terms of the best, that is it, it, the best watch he's ever made. Oh, wow. Okay. So there we go. Um, I like it. It's very nice looking. I can't say I've ever seen it before. I can't say I usually see things outside my <laughs> outside my blinders, right. you know? Right. I dig it. Back to you. Three. I'm going to go to a watch from my childhood, pretty much. Oh, really? Yeah, kind of. It's going to be the Blue Angels Chronograph. If you want to talk about super complicated and everything else, this is a watch that it kind of parallels the Seiko that I did in the beginning. Um, you know, being a, 
uh, yeah, they're not, uh, they, they call it eco drive, <laughs> uh, radio right. controlled eco solar and yeah. stuff. It's yeah. complicated, but this is undoubtedly a, a pilot's watch or a flight watch. Oh, absolutely. It just, I have those visions as a kid in the 80s when the Blue Angels watch was in the case. And now there is, back then, I think that there was probably just one or two. Now mm -hmm. there's a whole lineup of them. Um, I think they're beautiful. I am, I don't know if I actually pulled out the, I don't think I pulled out the actual part number of this one. Uh, let's see, is it here? AT8020-54L. Right. Because I wanted to get it under the 500. 100, if you yeah. can find it online under 500. But again, it's beautiful blue. Uh, it's aviation, which I love. Uh, obviously, the Blue Angels are a, you know, a, a demonstration team. Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, it's got the chrono. Uh, it's got the really complicated slide rule all, all around the outside. So you can calculate your fuel left or all this other stuff that you will never, ever use in your yes. life. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. It's got the world time. But it's just the, the play of the blue and the yellow. Um, just really, really sweet looking. Um, I dig it. Uh, let's see, 43 millimeters, 22 millimeter lug. Again, with the 60 minute chrono, uh, but a cool slide with world time sapphire. Mm. Uh, and you know, being atomic, you never have to worry about the time going out. It's always going to be accurate. So yeah. I, I think it's a, a solid, solid watch. Oh my God, I've just scrolled down and I'm looking at the, the Promos, the Skyhawks. They are, they're so busy, I love them. Yeah, some of their watches are cr crazy busy, crazy. It's like, oh, you almost forget that you're supposed to be telling time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love how they've put the little, um, the, 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 the sub dials, like... Um, like like um, gauges? Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. A bit like, the, I don't think you can see it in the thing, but the, the Trintec clocks over there. Yes, exactly. Yep, I remember yeah. those. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think I gave. I think I gave. Yeah, them no, no, one too, of them. Sure. Yeah, one of them's <laughs> from you. One of them's from you. When I went to um, the Reno Air Race, that everyone was either wearing Breitlings, right, or these. Yeah, and and it's just like you know you it's, you see real pilots wearing them, and and for good reason. I mean, they're rarely capable watches, and. I get a lot of criticism why I don't feature Citizen enough. And people don't realize that before I had the channel, I, I used to own many Citizens, all Eco Drives. Mm -hmm. um, I love them. They're, they're great, great quality. I think in a certain respect, they're, they're better quality than Seiko mm -hmm. um, at the entry level. And I also think that um, they, I need to review them more, but with the eco drive and especially some of this technology you kind of forget you don't set it you just it's not to me it's the you know seiko and citizen took diverging paths um a couple of years ago citizen basically in the usa at least in the usa said we're gonna go eco drive you know 96 97 percent mm. whereas seiko said uh-uh all of our professional watches because they're known for the divers they're gonna go um, the automatic route mm. and I think with viewers of your channel viewers of my channel my customers I think more people just like the automatic route that Seiko yeah. went you know rather than the quartz route you know quartz is almost seen as cheating by a lot of people yeah um, it's yeah. a shame they didn't do more I, I, uh, I used to have it's a, only in the US it's not you know I mean it, ah, as okay. a company there's there's I would I'm gonna say fairly confidently i don't know a ton about citizen but seiko does a hell of a lot more in automatic right but yeah. citizen is at least a couple of years ago they were number one watch producer in the world and they probably still are really um, yeah oh, yes yeah. isn't that funny i always yeah. presumed it was seiko yeah no citizen was much bigger interesting and that's got to be with because of eco eco yeah, drive. eco drive yeah. yeah it's everywhere yeah it's everywhere interesting i did not know that i will Review a sake, um, citizen. <laughs> <I will laughs> See that? A the, and that, and that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. I will return to citizen. I, I do like their uh, their divers. I think their divers and their um, aviation watches are, are so good. Yeah, the Pro Master. Um, yeah. Their divers are. You know, every so often I, I'll sell citizen. Um, 
but their divers and stuff really sweet um yeah what's the what's the one pilot's watch they're really known for um is it the navi hawk now thank you that is it yeah i mean that's done really well and that also has it a whole is. line built around it within the citizen umbrella uh, but yeah absolutely nice watch. i'm so glad you, you mentioned that uh we should do gmt's at, at some i think we're going to do that for april didn't we is that what we said well you tell me or maybe I'm having conversations. I with think myself. you have a conversation with yourself. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, maybe it's the maroon shirt that I'm wearing. You think you're talking? To yeah, yourself. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. What's your number three? Number three. This is another watch that people say, "Why don't you ever review one? Why don't you?" And another watch I owned before I had a channel uh, is the Casio Edifice. Okay. Uh, and it's in particular the one I owned was the EQ S five hundred DB one A one. What a beautiful name! So catchy. Though. <laughs> so I own this watch before I had the channel. I, so I never got to review it. But it, I should say, and I tried to for, for this video. I tried to research Edifice, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. I could not find anything about them other than what, you know, the spiel they have on their website, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know when they were founded. I don't, uh, there's a lot of varying different opinions, a lot of speculation. One thing is definitely certain that they were, I would say early 2000s, um, Casio wanted to position themselves with a higher end line. So, you know, they got all the, 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 the f91s and they yeah, got yeah, all yeah. the all of that stuff but they wanted yeah. yeah they wanted a higher end predominantly focused on chronographs oh, okay. with very like high-tech computerized like clever super quartz got it uh stuff got it. Uh, there's a lot of refinement there's a lot of the the dial work that goes into these is ridiculous some of them are a little bit too avant-garde for my taste mm -hmm. and other ones they just like this one, which you can get on at Walmart for about 150 bucks, uh, <laughs> is the dial is insane. It's got this kind of three-dimensional different. There's so much going yeah. on with it. It's a nightmare to work, all right? Because it looks like yeah, it. <laughs> because <laughs> it, you, you get a you get a manual like this thick. It's like a little book. Yeah, sure. But I I found it incredibly fun. Uh, it, it's very accurate, and when you start the chronograph, the the hand whizzes around, and it, it's, it's super super accurate. And then you can move the 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 hands on the sub dials are, are two handed, the mm -hmm. the one on the little twenty four hour dial. Got uh, it. it. It's just fun. You got the world time. I see that. Um, twenty nine city world time daily alarm. You got the the um, tough solar from from the other Casio technology. Yeah. Um, and they're still putting out really good chronographs now. They've just come out with this super, super thin one, uh, the Slimline collection with sapphire glass, uh, basically almost the same complications as this. Very sporty. Uh, they did sponsor the Red Bull racing team. I don't know if they mm -hmm. do anymore, but um, and they and people are right. They they kind of get overlooked. You got you do have versions with the multi band six, and you can right uh, just amazingly useful functional stuff um and a lot of refinement for, and and you know i know people scoff at casio um <laughs> yeah for sure but you know you've got signed crowns and 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 just the production that goes into these is very impressive mm -hmm. the finishing as yeah. well so mm -hmm. I, I love this watch and and the fact that it's so it, i'm not saying it's old but it's been around for donkeys now and I think this this particular model is still looks fresh, still looks cool, you know. I like it. it's nice. It's busy, but busy good. A bit like your your citizen. Oh, you're exactly. Yeah, you, you, it's funny. You know, I'm looking through the um, the Casio product page for it. And it's very nice, and I'm like, oh, what size is it? Because they got to have it, right? They don't give you the size. <laughs> it just goes to show that we are so such different thinkers and uh, than people in the regular world. Yeah. You know, watch guy, you look at a watch, what's the first thing after you after you want to know what the movement is? What's the next thing you want to know? The size. How big, yeah. is, how big is it? So I know if I can wear it or not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I remember off the top of my head it was 42, but it wore much smaller because it has mm -hmm. kind of, the lugs aren't, the lugs aren't that big. Um, right. The, the placement of the spring bars, at least. Uh, but the only, and, and that's the thing, I, I could not find out anything about them 
Yeah, exactly. Um, the only thing I found out was the etymology of edifice comes from the Latin, edificare, which means building, you know. Building. Yeah. That's all <laughs> I could find. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, come on, yeah, guys. I... Put, put, you know, you, you're doing great stuff here. Let's, yeah. let's hear a bit more about it. Um, it's like you wonder where the term Oceanus comes from. <laughs> exactly. Because that's another Casio. Oh, exactly. That's another kind of premiere. Yeah, that's another one of their things. That's like their, um, when you had got, went started with your speaking about um, edifice being, uh, you know, a line of chronographs, that's Oceanus. When they started Oceanus up, what, maybe 10, 12, 14 years yeah. ago? Again, I don't even know how long it was. That was their, it's, it's their nicer line. Yeah, right, 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 you right. Know? Yeah. So what's next for you? So this is my number two, huh? Uh... This is my number two. I've lost... Oh, yeah. God, we haven't done the thing. No, I, I didn't think you wanted to. You, get, you, can't, you, can't whip, you can't whip it out every episode because people won't be impressed anymore. <laughs> you know what I'll do, I'll do at the end? I'll do a countdown. I was thinking... Maybe you should do it, switch it up, do it like jazzy style and have it like whispering like number one, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like sultry. Yeah, sultry. <laughs> I'll do it at the end. I'll do it at the end. Two. Uh, so I actually, you know, a guy that worked for me asked me to throw this one in there because and I was like, eh, I'm not going to. Um, let me look at it. And I said, oh, my God, you're right. I should do this. Right. One. OK, so this is a. So you you don't even know this one's coming. No. Because I never told you. This is the Christopher Ward C3 Grand Tourer. Okay. Uh, C. So three. Three. Grand. Grand Tourer. Tourer. All right. Here we go. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. I didn't even know they did this. The green. It's a green dial. I don't know if they make more than one what? dial color. But it's a beautiful green dial chronograph wow. um i'm usually a blue fan but the green works here it's a green sunburst pattern two big eyeball chronograph <laughs> runs in a ronda 1521 nothing super special going on there case size 39 millimeters oh, nice a scant 11 thick sapphire crystal 46 tip to tip um applied numbers you know it's got so your friend owns this He's like, oh, tell TGV I said hi. <laughs> I said, okay, I will. <laughs> so he's, if he, I know he's watching, so it, Ryan, TGV says hi. Uh, it's Ryan, okay. Uh, hello, Ryan. <laughs> it's Ryan. He, work, he works for me. Right, okay. Um, and he, had, he pulled this one out. He's like, oh, check this one out. And I'm like, I don't want to start going through my list again. And I was like, holy crumb, look at this thing. And it just goes to show again that, you know, we don't know half the stuff out there. Yeah. But it is gorgeous looking it the, the, the tachometer on the outside is done so well why did they um, put the, the sub dials a little bit up do you see that well that's probably a function that's a function of the movement right that's the ronda movement um oh, in this situation it works yeah it works it's a it's it's a you know it's a two eye chronograph um oh you know why you know what, what's clever about that position they they haven't cut off the eight no not they at all. got rid of the nine no and the three three and the two well but there's no half numerals yeah that that's slick that is clever yeah the use of black and white um polished case mm. i don't know beautiful brown strap uh, i just uh what about 450 beans or something mm. yeah 450 so yeah christopher will get get slept on a lot um they they they, do. they, they and recently i think you know that whole debacle about their new logo um i've heard i i have logo issues myself yeah but yes yeah right <laughs> but you know and then and then it's funny because when um when i put tgv on a dial right people are horrified right you can't have right, someone's right. name on a dial well okay what about jago lagultra what about you yeah, know, yeah every other every watch. other watch brand <laughs> yeah but yeah. for some reason the um because i think they started putting it at the nine and in a in a that's what that's what threw people away when they started doing it on the left hand side yeah i don't mind it i don't mind it i think it's a more consistent branding now than it was before and i like the i like their logo it's clever because it's it's british swiss hybrid so it's a reference to right. both flags one flag of england with the cross and then the Swiss flag that also has the cross. So, yeah, I think it's clever. Yeah, it's no, it's nice. Yeah. I love it. I, I think the watch is the watch is super. 
A little bit of red on the sub dial, a little red seconds hand. So when's it arriving? <laughs> uh, you know, I'll tell you, at 30, you know, it, I had never seen a Christopher Ward in the flesh. I mean, okay, I saw one, I saw, they were at a show once yeah. that I went to. Yeah. But before that, I had never seen one. I was in Switzerland. Um, I was at Basel. And I don't think they go to Basel. But I was meeting a friend of mine that moved to Switzerland a few years ago. And he was wearing a Christopher Ward, and I was, and he's like, "Oh, check out the new watch I got." Mm. And I looked, I was like, "It's like, wow, this is really a nice watch. I see why people talk about them yeah. so much. And I'm really impressed." So, yeah, they're, they're doing great things stuff. now. I mean, they're, they're doing in-house calibers, and I think they're supplying the the, the MOD again with uh, again, like they did before. Sorry, uh, they are supplying watches for the military, and and they're mm-hmm. doing a lot. I I like them, and they're honestly priced. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. very cool. I, that's it's a good way to say it. Honestly, priced a lot of pizzazz. I like that. Yeah, me too. Right. Okay. Um, what are, What are you pulling out today? Two. I'm gonna go, and and you told me you wanted to put Belova. Oh, by the way, we should get we should get this out of the way. Everyone yeah, says what? I pronounce it wrong. I don't care what you say. <laughs> honestly no, no but how do you as an american because it's Bulova. an american come Bulova. Bulova. but i thought it was just tomato tomato again i don't care what you say I, it, it's it's i don't care you can say whatever you want to do it just say, when say you it, say it it sounds so much nicer though <laughs> <laughs> and i have a long island accent it's Bulova. Yeah, Bulova. 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 Like, like like ahva Bulova. you're you're doing a long o Bulova. Bulova. Yeah, that's what you're kind of doing. Yeah, but it's, yeah. I don't care what you say. Right. Okay. It, say however you want to say. We yeah, all know. <laughs> know what you mean. Omega, Omega. I know people that won't say ETA. They'll only say ETA because it's because it's technically it's an abbreviation, so it's not a right. word. Um, I can go through the whole thing. I won't even say Jaeger Lacult. I'll just say JLC. JLC. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny about JLC is that that was one of the first questions. Uh, I went with a group of friends t- when we went to the factory that, that one of them asked. And I was like, oh, God, don't ask that question. But then there were, it, because I think Jaeger was German. One of them was French. So it's like, and so even within the company, they pronounce it different ways. Right. And you know, if you're an American, it's very tough to pronounce European words with the right. same, you know, bol- blanc pan. You listen, yeah. Nardan. It's just yeah. whatever. We all know what we all know what we're saying. Let's yeah. just say it and not worry right. about it. Okay, M- so mozzarella, mozzarella, <laughs> mozzarella. <laughs> okay, Bulova, uh, Bolova, Bulu, Bulova, Bulova, Bulava. <laughs> All right, okay, Bulova. Right. Uh, so you were going to put a Bulova in yes. the in the thing and i told you not to yeah, yeah it's fine it's cool i'll still mention it I'll mention yeah it. good i mean i'm glad you you came up with what well, it suggested that because yeah you wanted to put in the curve which i oh I, now you it, just said what i was gonna say what oh, the hell? oh sorry you know come on man <laughs> take your belova and stuck your stick it up <laughs> your lova <laughs> yeah <laughs> um do yours but, Go. All right, okay. I'm going to go with the Lunar Pilot because okay, cool. I, I, th- I think it's it's got such a wicked story behind it. And the more I dig in, start researching, the more kind of oh, so conspiracies cool. and things I find all, all about it. So, um, as you know... That's and, so nice. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful looking thing. A number of companies didn't make the qualifications, the testing to be right. issued to, for NASA. Belova was one of them. Okay, so this I'm not sure if this is just conjecture or a conspiracy theory, but I read somewhere uh, that the 1933... I'm not quite... I'm going to get this correct. The 1933 America Act means that 51% of government-issued kit must be manufactured in the USA. Okay. So... They, Bulova was was kind of a. Um, they still got a second chance apparently. Omega got past this by having their cases made in Pennsylvania by Hamilton apparently, and then Ooh. shipped back to Omega in Switzerland to be assembled, assembled manufactured, and then back here. Back here. Now, um, so Bulova kind of snuck in as like a, a, a as a backup, and then I think it was the 1971 uh, Apollo 15 mission. 
the fourth moon landing. And, and again, I don't know if this has really happened, but apparently the the speedy, the crystal popped out. Mm. And so the, the astronaut Scott, uh, Scott, David Scott, that was it, um, wore the Bulova. Oh, interesting. So it's been on the moon, right? Okay. Now, again, you know, talk to my lawyers. I don't know if that's true or what is true, but it's still, it's still involved. You know, it was still considered, uh, uh, it was tested. and, and Right. Um, so it's a really interesting story. The original was Valjoux based, uh, of course, because it was, you know, it was the, uh, the, uh, the early 70s. Um, but they've, re they've brought it back. Um, I can't remember when it was reissued. But with the uh, precisionist, the, the 262 right. hertz movement, which I love as well because it's kind of references the tuning fork technology, which is mm -hmm. this great American made heritage, um, you know, developed in Astoria and, and just down the road in that beautiful Art Deco building that I used to live near. Uh, you, I know you, you're an owner. You, you actually put me on to the, to the space view. So the Actron. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Actron, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah amazing that. bit of, uh, of American history. And I just love how it all kind of connects together in this very tastefully done, functional, got the V-shaped layout of it, the monochromatic scheme. I love the pushes. It's got this slightly curvy pushes. And if it wasn't 45 millimeters, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd own it, you know? Yeah, no, it's beautiful. It's yeah. a beautiful looking watch, no doubt about it. And the way the with the precisionist, it's got a smooth sweep. So, yeah, it's quartz essentially. Yes. With that sweep, you get a. I don't know. It does. It just does it for me. Right. Um, I get it. I get yeah. it. It's like a, almost like a spring drive appeal. It's very exactly. Smooth exactly. And elegant. Yeah. Yeah. So that is my. Is that my number two? That was your number two. That, oh, okay. Yeah. So I'll piggyback on your number two. Just this is not my number one. So yeah, I had. I was going to do a bull of a curve. Yeah. Because I think it's amazing what yes. the hell they've yes. done. And I don't, I don't know if it's <laughs> quite working out for them very well. Um, I'm not sure if, if it's a hit for them. But if you don't know, they curved uh, the freaking movement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it fits in a curved case in the watch. Uh, and that to me is just, I don't know, that's comfort to the ninth degree. Yeah, I'm so glad you, you did mention it because... It proves that Bulova are, are, are still doing, doing stuff, doing new stuff, right? You know, and and it, they they're massively underrated. Yeah, okay, now they're owned by Citizen, but whatever. I'd prefer they're owned by Citizen than to stop existing. Of course, you know? right? I think they're great. I, the curve is so sexy. It's, it's yeah, got, and there's oh, a bunch of them. Yeah. They're real, and you can have them. You know, like I said, I found a couple, you know, under the 500 mark, 350 or so. Mm. Uh, I don't know. They're just really cool. And as you said, that precisionist movement, uh, I don't know. It's just, you know, there's more accuracy in it. There's every, every, it has everything going for it. Absolutely. Dig Absolutely. It. One. Are you ready for number one? Yeah, number one. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... I still have two watches to talk about, but I'm only going to talk about one number one because the other number one is discontinued, unfortunately. Um, but I'm going with an Orient. It is the Neo 70s Panda Chronograph. It kind of has, a, you know, a Dan Henry-esque look to it. Right. Never released in the USA, unfortunately. So if you want one, you have to go online, whether it be Amazon or some of the Japanese sellers. Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can get them for, you know, depending on where you go, around 250 bucks or so. Mm. But this is, is this not Panda? To yeah. the Panda degree. Beautiful Jesus. white dial, three black sub-dials. Uh, it's solar, 100 meters of water resistance. Um, again, we're looking at a 60-minute chrono. But I think people are buying this watch for the looks and, yeah, not for the, and not for the chrono. It's very Paul Newman, Daytona-ish. Yes, yes. Mm. It's almost almost skeleton hands. Um, the hand mm. a little bit see-through, a little bit of loom at the tip. Uh, black applied, silver markers applied with a little black stripe running through them. Um, I don't know. There's just has so much going for it. The, even the date works. The date's tucked between the four and the yeah. five. Yeah. And... Again, the black and the white of the date works very well with the black and white of the dial. 
I get so many requests for this watch, but again, this watch was never imported into the USA um, by Orient, so it was right. never, unfortunately, never available. So but you you can't even sell them if you wanted to. I can't even sell them if I wanted to, you wow. know, because they, you know, the Seiko, Seiko, there we go again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Orient, the Orient distributor out on the West Coast does not bring these in. I mean, and maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe they're not permitted to. This could be, you know, an Asia only model or something. Uh, but I, I feel for um, for looks uh, and for price and for functionality. I think this. This is why I picked it to be my my number one. Yeah, it is my number one. I never, never. Um, I, well, you're the best person to to ask. But mm. is are there solar quartz movements? Are there? I presume they're also in house. The Orient. Everything with Orient in house. Wow, Every right. movement is in house. Right. Yeah. Interesting. So they I, do it, and uh, unfortunately, in the USA. <sighs> Do they do any chronographs now? They had the Monterey, which is a very popular model, TTOV003Y or something. Mm. It discontinued donkeys ago, as you would say. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice, but it was a, nice. But it was a quartzy. <laughs> but it was quartz with a battery, but a really nice looking chronograph. And yeah. then again, it's just all their solar watches in the USA, the chronos, it's like everything, everything got the X. Mm. Um, so it was a shame. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's my number one. Can I just kind of say before you go, can I yeah. do my my other? If if you're looking for an awesome chronograph, mm. I don't know why this watch was discontinued, at least in the U.S. Orient Captain chronograph. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mentioned it to you yeah. at 250 bucks or so. Um, 12 hour chronograph, a little bit big, a little big in the tooth. 45 millimeter case, mm. um, 23 millimeter lug. If you want to talk about your oddballs. <laughs> yeah 20 what 23 23 but it came that, on a bracelet it was a black so dial there was a white dial um just really 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 nice watches yeah uh, had again that almost speedmaster-esque kind of look to it i don't know why i i it reminds makes me think of zinn for some reason sure has that has that uh, uh what's the word a utilitarian kind of utilitarian look to yeah. It. yeah yeah kind of like i'm here to kick some butt it was bulky. exactly like I said, 45 millimeter was built like a brick, but honorable mention, honorable cool, mention. Cool, Perhaps if it cool. was still in production, it would be my number one. It sold very well back in the day. I can see why. Number one. What do you got there? Okay. N- number, number one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth hits. Smooth. <laughs> You're probably going to be mad at this. Oh, God. Uh, I didn't put the flighty in, okay? Because no, I know it's okay. We, because it's precisely the reason you said precisely, right? Uh, it is personally my favourite. But if I had to pick again, I, I, I say again, this is not. This is about being the best. Yes. I think the best chronograph um, under five hundred dollars is the Seiko Arnie. Right? Okay. Yeah. Well, you, you took me. You. Wow! You surprised me there. Big time. So I used to own the original back in 2017. Mm-hmm. Now you can definitely not find them under five five hundred dollars. I bought right. it. Agreed. I just I, I scored one on eBay. Very very lucky that it was in used condition. I think the alarm beep had stopped working, but essentially I got a feel for it. I was shocked at actually how small it was because you know it's famous for being worn by Mr. Universe. Gun. You know. Right. And I should say, kind of got famous because he wore it in. I've got written here, Predator, Commander, Running Man, and Raw, Raw Deal. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure that there was another movie too, but I can't, for the life of me, I can't remember. Mine would be the, the, the Predator and Commando. I did not know he wore it in Running Man. No, you know what? I don't think it is Running Man. I think Running Man, he wore uh, G-Shock. Cause I, remember. Well, I don't even know. Yeah, I remember. So anyway, guys, if you know what the films are, please do add add the uh, in the comments. But yeah, anyway, it's synonymous with Arnie. So yeah, 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 sure. Uh, also, James Cameron wore one, which I mentioned in the last video. Uh, it's appeared in the James Bond movie as well, so it's got all this kind of cinematic stardom. But beyond that, horologically speaking, it's important because it was the world's first diving watch that featured a digital alarm and a chronograph. And it was Annie Digi, so it was right. it was yeah, a world sure. first. Nineteen eighty three, right? What a year for Seiko. Seiko were absolutely shutting it down, de- like 
dominating. That same year they released the first analog quartz uh, chronograph. Right. Um, so you got all this history, and then of course the elements of the watch are kind of the the shrouded tuner yeah. style case. Mm -hmm. You know, again goes back to the saturation divers, which were, were, were world changing. Um, so much kind of conspiring into together sure. into one watch, and yeah. so cool. And I I can actually wear it. You know, it's not. It's not it, tremendous. No, what is it? Forty. 44, 42? I can bring it up. I'll tell you. I want to say 42. Yeah. Let's see. I'll tell you right now. You can keep yapping and I will do it. Cool. I haven't two. seen the, <laughs> I haven't seen the uh, the new ones, um, but I can't see how Seiko have messed it up. I mean, they look they look great, you know. I stand corrected. The new one is 47. Damn. But I have, I have worn it and it does not feel like a 47. Or for a while, actually. So, so have they... St have they changed the scale at all? Or is no, it? I don't think so. I don't think so, no. It's, you know what it is? So much of the watch is not crystal and dial. Right. Um, the shroud adds probably four millimeters to the diameter, and then the bezel adds another four millimeters. So crystal is probably the same size crystal as on an SKX or something. Yeah, right. That, that explains it then. I just think it's so 80s, and, and it, 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 like I think for me and a lot of people, it has that nostalgia effect. Um, sure. And it's, it's, you know, I know I use this word so much, but uh, it, it is iconic. If I saw somebody wearing an Arnie, right, right. I, want, I want to talk to that person. I want to, right, you know, right, right. <laughs> let's go have a drink, you know, let's, right. you know, you know they're good people. Um, sure. It's so, and it's fun and, and it is. functional, you know. It is, it is. It does a lot. Yeah. It does a lot. Exactly. Um, and I love the, uh, I think they're calling it now the, uh, no, the Safari. Safarni. 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 So, there's, um, <laughs> so there's four models released, you know, to general public. There right. was the black, which is the 25, the Pepsi, which is the 27, and there's a 29 to 31. The 29 to 31 are green. And one, and the other one is tan. And those are the ones they call in the safari because of like safari, safari colors. Yeah. So those are the safari colors. Whatever. <laughs> I kind of like. I think that's kind of clever. I think it's <laughs> yeah. For whoever comes up with this stuff, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's clever. Um, yeah. So, uh, what else to say about it? I, I, I think that's it. Um, which was the Bond movie? I think it was The View to a Kill. That was 1985. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, there's a deleted scene. I haven't seen it, but really? I was reading about it that it features in the in a deleted scene, and there was one really? modded. Yeah, there was one modded with a with a like a cheese wire that you could pull out the crown to garrote oh, somebody. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, <laughs> not not surprised. <laughs> That's a shame it didn't wasn't in the it didn't make it to the final uh, cut, but um, that would be an interesting complication to have, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the Brightling emergency has it. Right, yeah, but then, but then you kind of you're ratting on yourself because it's yeah, going to call so, right? help. Yeah, <laughs> but at least you can kill somebody before they come to get you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, guys. Um, as always, don't forget to subscribe to Mark's channel. Thank you so much for. He's also sponsoring this uh, series, uh, which really helps helps keep the lights on. Um, I'm going to be busy editing for the next four days to get this up for you. Um, so it really does make a difference. Um, what else? Yeah. Check out, check out Mark's channel. I've said that already. Um, yeah, you did. Like, subscribe, click the bell icon, all of that good stuff. And we will catch you um, next month. Bye-bye.